Okay, well, thank you guys for coming. Um, welcome to the Cancer Institute. As um, Jen mentioned, I'm Marie Morandi. I'm the dietitian um, here at the Cancer Institute. I cover all of the facilities. We do um, monthly lectures and cooking demonstration classes, and I know on my table we had the upcoming um, class list for classes coming up. Feel free to call and RSVP so that you can continue to um, further the knowledge of um, nutrition as it relates to um, oncology. I'm just going to start with a few slides and then I'm going to give the floor over to Scott. I just want to give you guys, um, keep in your minds the overview or the, the goal of what we are doing with nutrition. Um, my question to start is, is eating color healthy? Yes. Or is healthy eating colorful? <laughs> so my nutritionist said that the more colorful the dish, the healthier it is. One of my doctors sent me this cartoon. Yeah, no. <laughs> now that's better. Both are colorful, but not both are healthy. The nature scales. I think you have a different picture in your um, slides, but it's all good. So how do I eat healthy? Uh, according to the American Dietetic Association, cancer experts agree eating a variety of colorful fruits and vegetables, um, uh, grains, whole grains, beans, legumes, um, help to fight cancer and many other chronic health problems, including heart disease and diabetes. I, can have the same, I always say I can have the same conversation no matter what my crowd is coming here to learn about, I'm still going to have the same conversation. The plant foods, um, give us the vitamins, the nutrition, the fiber um, that helps our bodies function correctly. So we want to eat a plant-based diet. does not mean that you have to become vegetarian or vegan, but it does mean that the majority of your plate of food, um, let's say three quarters of that plate of food, is going to include these plant foods. It's going to be a good portion of fruits and vegetables. It's going to be whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, etc. And you have that 25% that's going to be your animal protein. Uh, eat five or more servings every day of a variety of colorful fruits and vegetables. So you don't want to have the same vegetable every day. You want to have different colors um, because the different colors offer you different antioxidants. Um, many of these plant-based nutrients that fight cancer are based on the color um, of the food. And obviously they're all low calorie and good sources of phytochemicals. Um, phytochemicals are those plant chemicals, those plant antioxidants, those plant vitamins and minerals. Um, they provide the color, the, the, the odor, but they also support overall health. How do they support overall health? They stimulate our immune system, which is something we all want from our diets. They block substances we eat, drink, and breathe from becoming carcinogens. We may not have control over um, BPA or some chemical in the plastic or some pollutant in the air, but we do have control over what we put in our bodies, and many of these foods and nutrients can combat and work against all of those potential carcinogens. Prevent DNA damage and help with DNA repair. Um, reduce the kind of oxidative damage to cells that spark cancer. Slow the growth rate of certain cancer cells, which is an important thing if you had cancer or undergoing treatment or you um, want to prevent it. Trigger damaged cells to commit suicide before they can reproduce. That's a way that they keep control over the growth. And help to regulate our hormones. It's a big thing with hormone-related cancers, breast cancer, so to speak. The nutrients in broccoli and cauliflower Brussels sprouts, it free and all carbon off, um, reduces the amount of estrogen in the body and blocks estrogen receptors. So this is all a good thing. It's just a quick example. So there are good reasons to eat healthy, and I just mentioned all of them. We're going to keep those in mind. And there are prejudices about eating healthy. Your taste like cardboard. They don't. <laughs> they have no flavor, etc. So what do we do? We use various cooking techniques, various um, um, seasoning techniques and stuff that Scott is going to talk about and we can go over steaming, roasting, sauteing, grilling, all of these different kinds of cooking techniques can maintain nutrition but they can also add a lot of flavor. Um, we can use flavor enhancement, olive oil, uh, lemon juice or lime juice, sea salt, pepper, maple syrup, 
herbs, spices, all of them. And I hope everybody picked up a book as far as cooking with herbs and spices because that's going to be a great guide for you guys as far as adding flavor. Um, so uh, a whole grain, little bit of cheese, and I was mentioning this to somebody outside. Take a little bit of a good flavorful type of cheese, add a little bit onto your dish, a little on your salad or with your your meat or something, and it adds a big boost of flavor without adding a lot of calories. You don't have to chow down on something real creamy or real cheesy, but you can have that little bit that helps. Onions and garlic. I start every, almost every dish with onions and garlic. <laughs> so, um, and then you have kind of a nice reference list. I'm not going to go over a lot, but it's a nice guide to if you like Italian um, cooking or if you like French cooking or Spanish cooking, what the herbs are in that <coughs> type of cooking. Pick a couple and kind of experiment when, in, your, in your foods. So I'm going to pause there, and we're going to let Scott take over and tell us how um, he creates all those delicious dishes in season 52. Got long years. Thank you. Hey. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Well, I'll tell you a little bit about me and how I got my start with season 52. Um, I had worked for the Boca Hotel. I did an internship at the Boca Hotel, and then I worked for Houston's for a couple years. I worked for J. Alexander's for almost eight years, and I was really concerned about where food was going and how people were eating. And, and uh, Seasons 52 was really there. There was only one Seasons 52. It was just a prototype restaurant, and um, I got the, I had a job interview with the culinary director, and his name's Cliff Plo very famous chef. And um, so we sat down in his office in Orlando and we started talking about food. You know, and he said, well, let me ask you this. How do you feel about butter? And I said, well, let's see. I started, started cooking when I was about 13 years old. I said, I'm pretty sure I have butter out in my car. I love butter. The more butter, the better. Sauces, all the, all the mother sauces, half of them contain butter. You know, and he said, well, this is where you're going to have to make a, a paradigm shift in your life in order to be able to, to operate a Seasons 52. You know, it's a restaurant with, you know, no, no dishes on the menu have more than 475 calories. There's no trans fats in the recipes. There's no butter in the recipes. All the food is really good for you. So he said, you know, it's, it's like one of those things where if you make that bridge professionally, you have to really make that bridge personally. So. That was a very long drive back from Orlando as I pondered whether I could live without butter. So I got home from the job interview and I, I come in the house and I kiss my wife hello and then I, I walk right up to the refrigerator and I, I open the refrigerator and there it is, sitting there. So I grab the garbage and I just start like, and I just start throwing things out. My wife is looking at me like I'm crazy. She's like, what the hell are you doing? And I says, well, I said, if, if I'm going to take this job, then, then I have to change myself as well. And I'll tell you, tell you right now, I've been to some reunions with some of the guys that I went to culinary school with, and I'm one of the few that can still fit into the same uniform. <laughs> so I think I'm on to something. Trust me. So I'm going to demo uh, a couple of dishes. You know, we just got into uh, our spring menu. Um, so first I'm going to start with um, golden beets. Everybody, anybody ever seen these before? OK. Beets are good for you, all right? One, one thing with beets is beets take a long time to cook. So you take something like this, you're going to rinse it, put it in a pan with a little bit of water in the bottom of it, cover it with tin foil. You're going to bake it at about 350 degrees for a good better part of like hour, hour and a half until it gets to the point where you can kind of pierce it with a fork or a knife and pull it back out clean. At that point, you know it's cooked. You can pull it out and you can let it cool. So. We've got that. Now when, the beet, when beets are done, this is what they're going to look like. A little different. Okay? So. Let's see here. Is that like a baked potato? Like, like said, cook it Almost like a baked potato, right on. Like in a tin foil? Yeah. Like yeah. Right, that's what I'm going to do right now. 
What I'm doing is uh, I'm just taking the skin off of a golden beet. No, you can just put them in, into a you can just put them into a pan with a little bit of water or wine in the bottom. Cover it with tin foil and just kind of let it let it steam itself in the oven. Does it taste like a red beet? It kind of does. It, it has a very similar flavor profile to a red beet. No. Same nutrients as a red beet. Sure. Yeah. So once you once you peel it, that's what it's going to look like. Right. Exactly. So now I'm just going to cut them pretty thin. I'm going to do a, do a couple of little uh, appetizers here for you. Do they have fiber? Yeah, they're they're very fiber. They're very healthy for you. I would think it might be a little sweeter, honestly. So what we'll t what we'll do with this? They don't have seeds in them, do they? No. Nope. Yep. Okay. So now what we're gonna do? I'm gonna make a little wasabi sour cream, and that's basically just gonna be sour cream, but low-fat sour cream and a little bit of lime juice and a little bit of wasabi. What is wasabi? Wasabi is like a, it's like a Japanese horseradish. Is this recipe in the No, it's not. Wasabi is hot, isn't it? It's got a little bit of, little bit of heat to it. And that, that sometimes that's one of those things where it's kind of a trick where you're tricking your mind where you're, you're eating something healthy, but you've got a little bit of spice to it. Sour cream, sour cream a little bit of lemon juice, and and wasabi. Nope, no onions in this one. Well, the the reason why the wasabi works so well with this recipe is that it gives it an Asian flair. And it just gives it a little bit of spice. So, you know, beets are kind of like this very neutral flavor. So from there, you can start to add different dimensions. This is the dimension on this one, besides being Asian, is going to be that the wasabi has just a little bite to it. It's got that little bit of horseradish, you know, that you can kind of get in your, your nose. I'm going to put just a little more. Is that sour cream without chemicals? It says naturally. So yep. Yep, this is um, just a low fat. Yep. Sure, yes, sir. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. It's going to be kind of thick, it's going to have a lot of body to it. But my favorite part is that I can paint with it. Yep, it's got a little green color to it. Well, where it gets the color really is from is from the wasabi. Yeah, a little bit of lemon juice. So pretty simple recipe, you know, just lemon juice, wasabi, sour cream. Now, once I got in my squirt bottle. Oh, sometimes I gotta. And and the wasabi would it be to taste? Yeah. Okay. Did you say lemon or lime? Uh, this was uh, lemon. Yep. That's just a little bit of parsley and put. Put that with some chopsticks, and so that's really simple. But you've got some some really good contrasting simple flavors, and that's kind of one of the things I think Marie was getting at with when you start to take really simple foods. You don't have to really get too complicated. Just a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of herbs and spices to really bring out the flavors of them without cooking all the nutrients out or eating a lot of things that are not good for you. Is that powdered wasabi? Right. Yep. Okay. 
<laughs> so I'm going to do, I'll do one more dish with beets. Actually, I just put it in, in, a, in a pan, like a hotel pan or, you know, like a little roasting pan. It's a little bit of water in the bottom of it. And then the beets, just cover them with uh, tin foil. Sure. What's that? Just cover them with uh, tin foil so they kind of steam. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I don't know if we can. Fine. So now I'm going to do one more dish with beets. So again, same beet, same product. Just going to peel it. They peel really easily. With the red beets, is it the same idea? Do you peel them again? Yep, exactly. So you could do it with you could do it with red beets. You could do it with candy striped beets. You could do it with uh, these. So there's definitely different beets throughout the year that you'll see uh, and in the marketplace. These are go golden beets. Okay. So this one, instead of cutting it into circles, we're going to cut them a little different. We're going to cut them into wedges. Uh, for these dishes, yes, but you can definitely serve them hot. That's for sure. And that's the great part about once you get a beet to this point, you can eat it cold. You could put it in the microwave just to add a little bit of heat to it. You it really can do a lot of different things with it. You know, just about every vegetable that you can imagine I have, from broccolini, broccoli, asparagus, and you name it, I got it. Okay, so this one we're going to do a little differently. Actually, we're going to take these guys. Okay, so this one we're going to use the same beets, slightly different cut. We're going to add a couple of different things though. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Yeah, a little olive oil. We've got uh, roasted pistachios. So there you get some nuts in there. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of goat cheese. Like a little appetizer, of course. Okay, a little bit of goat cheese. We're gonna add a little bit of micro basil, or you can add just regular basil. Just kind of shift on it a little bit. What makes it micro? It's uh, it's like it's like baby basil almost. Yeah, and then then I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of aged balsamic. So again, you've got. Some really simple ingredients. You're going to get, you know, the earthiness of the beets. You're going to get the really creaminess of the goat cheese, but not too much. You know, you're going to get, you know, the, the olive oil in there, which is great for you. You're going to get that, that bite of the balsamic, aged balsamic vinaigrette. And then you're going to get that very herby finish with the basil. So you've got some very simple flavors. And then the pistachios at the end are, for me, that's like the best part because I really love pistachios. But you combine these flavors, they're very simple flavors, but once they get together, it's a complex thing going on and it's yummy. I'll pass it on to you. All right. Would that work with Okay, so I've been playing around with tuna this season. So I got a nice little slab of tuna here for us. Okay. So, yeah. Some are, and some are. Tell you what, we're we're pretty fortunate uh, for being in Florida because we're we have great produce year round. Mm -hmm. But there is, but produce from California is like it's right there. You know, where where our season ends, they're like year round. You know? So let me uh, change this out. Really, kind of clean this pan up a little bit. So we're gonna do a couple of things for for this tuna dish. We're going to make a tuna tartare, which is going to be like finely diced tuna that we're going to season with a, a little bit of a sweet Thai sauce. It's going to have some ginger. It's going to have uh, some parsley and chives, a little bit of sesame oil. We're going to make a... Would you move those two bottles? Sure. Sorry. 
We're going to make a, a little fruit salsa to go with it. We're going to make an avocado mousse. So we're going to do that right now. So avocados, pretty easy. And I was saying before, um, um, and the other dish, don't forget, don't count out those fresh herbs and all these spices as far as cancer fighting nutrients because, like I was saying, the basil itself, the ginger he's going to use, um, the um, fresh parsley, all are going to offer their own layer of cancer fighting, you know, plant based nutrients. Now, I know you guys can all tell me what good, healthy fat he's going to be cooking with now. Avocado. Uh, avocado. Uh, and all of these are going to be, well, avocado is going to be your monounsaturated fat, okay? And that's actually been studied to help people manage belly fat, okay? It actually helps us manage blood sugars for diabetics, okay? And, um, and obviously is protective of our hearts. The other thing he's cooking with here is the tuna. Now, tuna itself has a little, that little bit of omega-3 oils along with the salmon and stuff I think he's going to use later. So that, again, is heart-healthy, cancer-fighting, you know, healthy fats. So all of these, you know, he's doing the same thing as, I, as often I do in my cooking classes is you're layering these healthy nutrients into these dishes so that everything is working for you. Yeah. Okay, so we've got fresh avocado. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, poblano pepper in there just to spice it up a little bit. A little bit of, uh, that was avocado, poblano pepper, a little bit of wasabi, a little bit of cumin. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, it's kind of like making a guacamole, but it's gonna be like a avocado wasabi mousse. Yep, so now I'm just kind of squishing it up. I didn't put salt in, but you certainly can. Yeah, it's got uh, poblano peppers in there, so it's got a little bit of spice to it. Those are these are green. They're like green, uh, kind of little bit of heat to them. Okay, so we've got a wasabi mousse. Yes, it's it's roasted. Yep, that's a great point. Okay, so we've got that. The other thing we're going to make is a little bit of fruit salad. So I need one more pan here. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, let's see. We'll just we'll use this one twice. So, so for our fruit salad portion of it, we've got uh, a little bit of diced jicama. Okay. Jicama. Yeah. Okay, we've got red peppers, roasted red peppers. You've got uh, pineapple, a little bit of mango, yeah. a little bit of lemon juice, what was that? a little bit of lemon juice. This is a little bit of honey. Okay, and I'm going to give it a little parsley too. It kind of has a little nutty flavor of, of that. It's, uh, it's very neutral. Scott, can you repeat the ingredients? Sure. It had um, jicama, of course, roasted red peppers. Uh, we've got pineapple, mango, a little bit of parsley, lemon juice, and honey. Okay, so that's going to be my, my salad portion of it. Okay, so, so far I've got a couple of things going on here. I've got, I've got a fruit salad. I've got a wasabi avocado mousse. Okay, and now for the star of the show, which will be the tuna, okay? Let me grab a glove here. What kind of tuna? This uh, is ahi tuna. So and you'll know when you, when you see a color like that with nice bright red tuna, that's exactly what you're looking for. So basically what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to fine dice it. Okay. 
Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm cutting it uh, about an eighth of an inch thick just to get started. That should be good. Okay, then these I'm going to go a little bit smaller because I'm going for a very fine dice. Sushi grade and raw. Okay. I tell you, we're we're running a, a a couple of different fish right now. We're running obviously uh, Atlantic salmon. We've got uh, Idaho rainbow trout. We've got uh, Branzino. Not this. No, not this one. Thank you. I would say, yeah, for sure. You know, you if you go to uh, Publix or Whole Foods, you you'll see that that grade there. So this is just nice, bright red, diced tuna. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple of things here. I'm gonna add some chives. I'm going to add a little bit of red peppers, a little bit of ginger, and a little bit of a, a sweet uh, Thai sauce just to spice it up just a little bit. Okay, just mix it up. If you were to pick one of your favorite uh, seasonings, what would it be? in the kitchen that you couldn't go without. If you were only allowed two or three seasonings, what would they be? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you what. Um, in my per in my from my personal diet, before I, I don't really use salt or pepper at all, but I do use a lot of blackening seasoning. Like any of the Paul Prudhomme like blackening magics, they're so yummy. And whatever you add them to, you know, you can add a lot. If you really like a lot of heat, you can add a little bit. I mean, it just like, it'll take something that's just kind of bland and to like, nice. Like a blackening seasoning, Paul Prudhomme blackening magic. It's, they, they don't, and you can take a look at the labels, because we generally, some of our recipes, we'll use that and salt, but me personally, I just use the blackening spice. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got a couple of cool ingredients here. We've got a wasabi mousse. We've got uh, a fruit salad, and then we've got this wonderful tuna. Now, so what am I going to do with this to make this look cool? Let's see. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mousse. I got a little mold, just a little stainless steel mold. And the cool thing about this is if you're, if you're entertaining at home, this is definitely something you could do ahead of time and then keep it in your cooler. And then as you start to you know, spend some time with your guests, you want to bring out another course, and you pull these guys out and you're going to blow them away. So a little bit of wasabi mousse in there. And I'm going to just kind of pressing it down so I'm going to make layers basically. Okay, a little bit of the fruit. And now for the tuna. So we've got some simple ingredients, right? But now they're starting to get complicated. They're getting complex because you've got, you're going to have a lot of different flavors going on when you, when you dig into this because you're going to have the, the richness of the tuna. You're going to have the, the fruitiness of, you know, the fruit salad that's in there. You're going to have this creamy butteriness, but a natural creamy butteriness of the avocado wasabi mousse. You're going to have a, just a little bit of that horseradish flavor going on. Yep, an appetizer. So let's see. So now I take this, pull, pull the mold out. 
כן. Then we're going to garnish it with a little bit of uh, sriracha sauce for those of you that like spicy, spicy. Is that very hot? This is hot. All right, so that, and then, of course, where did I put that at? We would serve that with a little bit of Hawaiian, black Hawaiian salted lavash. Okay, so, sure, please, yeah. Can you tell us again what went into the fruit salad? The hikama? Sure, hikama. J J I C A M A. J J I C A M A. Hikama. Okay. Let me ask you. Yeah. If, if, if I was eating fish of some sort on the grill or whatever, could that avocado wasabi be used as a sauce for? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could put it. Maybe put it off to the side as an accompaniment, and then just kind of. Yeah. Okay, and then the last the last dish I'm going to demonstrate for you folks is um, it's certainly uh, one of our favorite uh, items. Just like you were saying, how you really like the trout, our trout. And we sell a lot of trout. I mean, even on a on a slow day, I'll still sell like a hundred orders of trout. This dish trumps certainly trumps that. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make cedar plank salmon. It's one of our most popular dishes, um, and it's, it's really like a, it's a Native American cooking technique. And some of the things you're going to need um, are these little cedar planks. And I'm pretty sure you can find them at some of the, some of the markets here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, put this right there. Okay, so cedar planks. So the great thing about these is you can cook on them, and then as, as the, your, your protein starts to come up to temperature, you're going to get this natural kind of aroma going of like the, as the cedar starts to heat up and get crisp. So you've got, you know, it, this whole different flavor profile going on. This is a really easy recipe, but when you combine it with all these different flavors, uh, you'll see that it's, and I'll tell you, it's one of our most popular dishes. I, you know, as many as I make a day, I sell them all. So we've got our cedar planks. We've got, you know, a nice piece of salmon. It's a, it's a six and a half ounce piece of salmon. And the one thing I always say with the, the seafood that I purchase, and along the same lines of almost all the things that we purchase for our restaurant, is we're really concerned with sustainability. So there's always this big argument about, um, you know, is the fish wild? Is it farm raised? You know, back and forth, what's better? I'll tell you, my personal opinion is this. I'll take a farm-raised product, especially when it comes to a fish, versus wild, because I know exactly what this fish ate for breakfast. <laughs> it's kind of like a bodybuilder. You know, if you've seen people with, like bodybuilders, they have that body because they have a particular diet and they live a certain way. That's how these fish are raised. They're raised in like estuaries where their water uh, is always checked to make sure that there's no pollutants in it. They're, they're fed a very specific diet. You know, so when people want to argue about, you know, farm-raised fish versus wild fish, for me, I'll go for farm-raised every time. And the other part of that is it's a sustainable resource for us, you know. We can tell these growers, hey, this is what we're going to use for our restaurant for a given year, and that's how they, that's, they plan on, on growing that for us. Yeah? Farm-raised in the United States? Yeah, this is uh, farm-raised uh, at the North Atlantic, you know, like Maine. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, soaking them is definitely an important thing. Thank you for bringing it up. I was going to get to that. Yeah. No, you, you, it's really good. Uh, you, you'll want to soak the planks in a little bit of water um, so that this way they don't just burst into flames when they get to that. that yeah. That's an excellent point. So you've cooked with cedar planks before. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, 
Uh, it depends on whether or not I'm grilling it or whether I'm roasting it. This recipe, it's just going to be roast. It's going to be oven roasted. So at that point, yeah, I'll take the skin off. But for grilling, I like to leave the skin on. Yeah, and then, and honestly, as you start to manipulate it around the grill, uh, it'll generally come off when you're finally finished with it. Yeah. Did you have a question back there? Well, like I, like I said, I, I think it's a, always a better product because they're, the, they're, very, they're very precise. I mean, it's aquaculture at its best, you know, so they know exactly what those fish are eating. And, you know, I think for me personally, uh, it's, it's the way to go. You know, and then obviously for us as a planet, we're always looking to be sustainable, whether it's the, the produce companies that we deal with or the dairy companies that we deal with. You know, sustainability is a very big thing for, you know, for restaurants like mine and for really what the future uh, is going to hold for food. You know, there's, there's so many people, so we want to make sure that we're not depleting the whole planet of something, you know. So, okay, so cedar plank salmon. Again, it's a very simple recipe, but when, when, you're, when it's all said and done and you finally sit down and you're letting those flavors complement each other, that's where the magic happens. So you'll see that the... The preparation of most of these ingredients is really simple. It's just when they all get together on the same plate on your fork, that's where the magic's coming together. So you got your salmon. Now I've got, this is a, basically a Dijon mustard and a little bit of white wine. So I'm going to combine them and I'm going to just kind of get a little paste going. Yep, it's basically Dijon mustard with a little bit of white wine. Okay, okay and then I'm just going to glaze my salmon with it. Pretty basic. Okay, and then once this bakes, this is going to caramelize. It's going to give the salmon a nice little crust. And that doesn't have a lot of calories. That's a good... No. And I'll tell you, when we start to talk about, you know, ratios, you know, our, my standard ratio for, for food at, at our restaurant is six to seven ounces of protein four to five ounces of uh, vegetables, and usually three to four ounces of starch. And that's one serving, and that's it. So we'll take the salmon. We're going to take some veggies. Now, generally, what I'll do at the restaurant is I'll have one plank for the salmon, one plank for some vegetables, whether it's uh, asparagus, maybe some carrots. And then this is just going to get roasted in an oven. And, and that's it. It's very simple, but as the salmon starts to cook with a little bit of wine, a little bit of mustard, the flavor of the cedar plank coming up, it's going to get caramelized. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what it's going to look like when we're done. Sure, I'm sorry. That's okay. Right, right on the planks. So, and the plank had to be wetted before? Yeah, you're going to want to soak the planks before. Before you cook with them, yes. And nothing on the vegetables? Now, this is the part where it can get kind of personal. You know, you can certainly season them. A little bit of salt and pepper. Or you could put blackening seasoning on them. Whatever kind of seasonings that you really like. Some, you know, depending on your diet. If you have a diet that, you know, there's, there's uh, like some sodium issues. You know, I would advise against it. But you're going to get a lot of flavor off of the plank itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, did you say the temperature and the time that you... Right. So the oven that we're using is a pretty hot oven. Sure. It's a pretty hot oven. It's, it's about 500 degrees. So, and, and at 500 degrees, a couple of things are going to happen. Um, you're going to start to get some caramelization from the cedar plank. The mustard is going to caramelize on top of the salmon. And, and you're going to almost kind of get a little crust on the top of the salmon. But the inside of the salmon is going to be nice and moist. Okay? Put the vegetables at the same time? Sure, absolutely. You know, it, it'll probably take, uh, honestly, for a, a seven ounce portion of salmon, less than 10 minutes. Yeah, pretty quick. And the vegetables also? Sure. Yeah. Let me just go through a few more of the slides. We've had um, uh, mentioned a few of the um, categories of food that fight cancer. I wanted to mention just a couple of things I'd like to um, remind everybody. Um, the cancer fighting healthy foods and we actually cook and demonstrate with this fairly often once a month you'll have different classes on different topics but um, uh, tomatoes would be one of them and I always remind everybody that in actuality to get the benefit of tomatoes you want to cook your tomatoes you want to have tomato sauce or tomato juice or tomato soup or 
stewed or sauteed tomatoes on the stove, it's okay to cook tomatoes because you, um, you, you are able to absorb the lycopene from the tomato, which is a good, powerful antioxidant. Um, so one thing I've been doing recently, I've um, uh, been um, taking um, stewed or diced tomatoes, um, cooking it up with a little um, garlic and onion, um, I'll put some uh, nutritional yeast flakes. Actually, I've been um, a little bit more on the vegan side recently, so I've been using nutritional yeast flakes for uh, B vitamins and protein. Uh, garlic, olive oil, serve it with some brown rice or quinoa. I'll put some beans in there. Um, I'll put some white garbanzo beans, black eyed peas, whatever kind of beans you like. Um, and it serves and ends up being a really nice. Um, um, plant-based meal. Winter squash, sweet potatoes, I think you could probably put those um, um, golden beets in that category of uh, foods high in beta carotene, vitamin A, uh, 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 fiber, all that kind of stuff. So I mentioned a couple of different ways of, of doing this. Roasting uh, brings out a lot of flavor as you already talked about with the caramelization um, process that goes on. I've, we've done some, I've done a recipe with roasted squash, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of rosemary. Put that herb um, in there, let it um, roast with the squash. Adds a lot, then you can put it on into a salad, saute it up with some uh, greens and some uh, whole wheat pasta for another option. Green leafy vegetables, if you want to have in our diet, you can throw actually some of that spinach or, or kale or something into the um, tomatoes and the beans and the, that nice little saute, but um, uh, you can braise the spinach with thyme, tarragon, some onions, some garlic, nutmeg, um, put it in with some tomatoes and a little bit of a nice fish filet. And then also the asparagus, was, as I mentioned, was really good roasted. <coughs> Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, we talked about this family food as far as the free on carbonyl, the estrogen um, uh, benefit, uh, from these foods, uh, interesting new research that uh, uh, a scientist is doing, and she has found that to be able to benefit from these plant-based nutrients in the broccoli or Brussels sprouts or cauliflower or something, um, it's helpful to, especially broccoli, to steam the broccoli just for about five minutes. You don't want to make it real soft or steam it for too long, but a five minute steam actually activates the enzymes in that food. <coughs> so a lot of things, you read a lot on the internet or read a lot about diets and you say, oh, the raw food that has all the enzymes, if you start cooking food, you don't have any enzymes left. Well, in actuality, they're finding, you know, there's actually some benefit to cooking a little bit um, uh, to our foods. So what are you guys going to do now? You're going to go home. You've got your guide to cooking with herbs and spices. We've got some inspiration from Seasons 52. You've got our class list. You can come and see all of the rest of our classes. And you're going to get into the kitchen to cook. OK? Have fun, experiment, and take advantage of going to restaurants like Seasons 52. Did anybody write down their questions? Any other questions? Questions? Anybody have any questions?